we are about to have the event for Geomancer. You might be watching this right now deciding whether you want to do the event or not. To go after this beady-eyed dwarf. Yes, you want to. If you are early game or mid game, this is going to elevate your account. No matter where you're at in the game right now, and by the time you're done with this video, you will believe me. You will definitely want to get this champion. It's going to elevate your clan boss, your dungeon runs, your keep runs, your doom tower runs. Whatever you have going on right now, this dwarf is going to help you out. I spent all day working on this guy. All morning, my wife was off. We were watching The Magician Season 4, finishing that up. As we were watching it, I had my PC up on the side. I was doing so many, I don't know, three or four hours worth of runs. So if you're having difficulty in the game with spiders, we're going to help you. Ice Golem, we're going to help you. Anywhere in this game, especially Clan Boss, we're going to help you. But this guy will do it. And the greatest thing about this is that he is very easy to gear. The gear requirement is just speed, lifesteal gear, and then I want you to make him tanky. Don't worry about trying. He does have a high multiplier on the A2. Don't worry about the damage. He brings the damage. We're going to, of course, need masteries. We need that tier 6 mastery. We either need War Master or Giant Slayer. That's a tier 6 mastery. I couldn't even speak properly. This guy is amazing and i'm gonna sell you on him because i want your account to go further and after doing all this play testing this will happen now if you're real late game and you've got a robust roster then yes you might not want to use geomancer although you might want to after the few things that i show that he can do especially with ice golem soloing the boss on 25 if you have issues there along with some other stuff that we're going to show in just a minute so the biggest thing about this champion is to get the burn up do you need books? It's going to really help you to book this A3 out. If you can't book it out, you can still use him pretty effectively, but we need to have this burn up. It has to be a burn placed by this Geomancer. So whenever your teammates get hit or you get hit, it has to be a burn placed by him. So if there are two Geomancers, it doesn't work. It will go off of the last Geomancer to place a burn. So don't worry about two Geomancers. Yes, Vizier can extend this and keep it up. Even after Geomancer is dead, you can have the burn up and reflect damage. Right here, we're negating 15% damage to our whole entire team. That alone is amazing. But then we get the reflect. If the burn is up, that reflect damage can proc a giant slayer and war master proc which is huge for lifesteal to get all our life back and to do amazing damage on these bosses this one right here decrease accuracy this is going to help us out a lot because we're going to decrease any kind of debuffs trying to come to our team and we're going to make sure that our geomancer has a little bit of resistance again super easy gear requirement for this guy all we need is accuracy and speed to start with Give me accuracy and speed in a lifesteal set, and this guy will take you to the moon. You're going to feel better about your account. You're going to make it further, I promise you. Let's get into some of these runs. We're going to go to Ice Golem first, then we're going to do Clan Boss, then we'll jump over to Spider, then we'll hit up some keeps, and we'll talk further about what he can do to help your account out. Word Ice Golem, let's run it. So out of all the hours of recording I did, I chopped it up, tried to find the best things for you to see we are going to bring a seer in here to get these waves down quickly and then we're going to do a run without seer because it doesn't matter about the waves whatever you're doing right now to get through the waves do it and then bring in your geomancer on the team if you don't have a bad alcazar for ice golem 24 or 25 then bring in your geomancer low gear requirement lifesteal gear geomancer is actually pretty cool how he does the burn because he will put it up on the person with the highest turn meter and then he'll cycle through and do burn on different people now he's stealing turn meter he is stealing turn meter on that a3 when he applies a burn three turn cooldown could be about a two turn cooldown if he steals a full turn meter which is nuts going through content in the game now we are on 25 for fire knight so we can't steal the boss's full turn meter i don't believe how they did everything with 21 to 25 but we can steal it from the side minions and we can get burns up you don't have a tyrant you don't have a bad Alcazar to get easy runs through 24 and 25. But you do now have a Geomancer. And he's got your easy lifesteal gear on. And he doesn't want to give up. He put decreased accuracy up on the minions. So we won't get debuffs on us. We don't have to have insane resistance now. We need the accuracy always. Because we're going to get that burn up. We're going to steal turn meter. And then our dwarf is going to go ham. He's going to apply that burn out to everybody there. right? Everybody that's alive. And then he's going to keep doing his reflect. Reflect on everybody that has a burn. And that can proc Giant Slayer. And that's going to heal him. Now on a run like this, I would lock out his A2. 
We don't need his A2 to happen. We do want his A1 sometimes because if we get low on life, that A1 can proc Giant Slayer on all the enemies we are attacking, which is really going to heal us back and do more damage to them. But we're going to get burns up on everyone. We're going to keep dropping turn meter. And look at the time. Look at that time. Stage 25. Tell me you've got a faster stage 25 team without Bad Alcazar or a Tyrant soloing at the end. Maybe you do. Maybe you've got some Royal Guard set up or some Seer combination. But look at this. Two minutes. We're going to do it again. I think we do it again in another run. Oh, I did a lot of runs. I did a lot of test runs. And it's solid. It's a solid team. You're going to get through here. We did get a debuff at the end. Unfortunate there. Because I don't really have him in high resistance. 2 minutes and 25 seconds. With Geomancer soloing. So whatever team you use right now to beat through Ice Golem. 25. Then you've got it made at the boss. If you are frustrated with Ice Golem. Because you keep dying at the boss. You keep dropping him below the thresholds. Now you've got it. You've got your Geomancer that is going to take care of all that. Your team is going to die. This is a normal team. We've got Ninja over here. We've got decreased attack, decreased defense. We've got our Archmage to help us through here. And we do have Rosin Scarhide to give us a little bit more damage. Affinity, right? We've got the strong affinity and force there and turn meter reduction. It's going so fast right now. It's actually hurting my eyes. Let's skip forward. Yeah, it took us much longer to get to the boss because we're not using Seer and then a Renegade to reset. So now they're all going to fall off and die. <laughs> Our ninja isn't really going to do us any good anymore here, although he did just do a nice snipe there, and he's staying alive much longer than I thought ninja would. Well, damn, man. Ninja is chopping it up. But that's fine. You can bring in the DPS and let them take some things down. But you actually want the side minions. So when I did try this with Lydia and Seer, it didn't work out as well because Lydia stops the guys from coming back. And then we don't get this many burns up. I didn't fail. It just took longer. It took long, longer for me to just keep applying a burn on the boss, turn me to reduction on the boss. I had to keep waiting for the boss to take a turn. So then we turned it into, if you have Seer and you're downing the waves with Lydia, and instead of a 2 minute and 20 second run, you're looking at probably a 3 minute and something run. Maybe even up towards till this time, right? So we did it in 4 minutes without Seer dropping the waves. For your early game, mid game. You're just going to put him in on your team. He's going to do what you just saw. You're going to have that lifesteal gear on. If that burn is not up and applied by Geomancer, you will not get that amazing reflect. It just will not happen. So yeah, you want books. And he takes a lot of books though. So let's get over to Clan Boss before we do this actually. So we were the very first to come out with Geomancer on the Clan Boss. This was us. Every time we're always bringing you the world first stuff. So with Geomancer, my first video, and you guys can go fact check this back in June the 10th. We did a video on the 10th, right? So I did it on my unkillable team, just testing proof of concept. And then I went and did a budget unkillable. This budget unkillable, he did 27 million, almost 28 million. And a lot of people ask me, well, Stu, I don't have an unkillable team. How many, how many turns are you making it? How many turns are you going into the clan boss? Of course, with Geomancer, you want to do it under 50% HP. That means the boss is going to slam everybody with two hits when it does the AoE. Each time it does the AoE, it's going to do two big hits. Both of those hits will reflect from everybody out there. That's 10 reflects back at the boss that you're going to try to get Giant Slayer procs on. Now, he's got a lifesteal gear, so he's going to heal back all of that and stay alive. So one, if you don't have an unkillable, how many rounds are you making it? Are you making it 25 rounds? Well, then he's going to do, well, my head's in the way. Then he's going to do 14 million damage. So look at your team right now. Look at whatever team you have and consider that if you remove somebody, whatever damage they're doing right now, you remove them, but you can still keep in your decreased defense, decreased attack. You put in Geomancer, how many rounds are you making it? Because we're doing 50 rounds here on an unkillable just deduct that from this 28 million that he did and that's what you're able to do so there's you don't need to see me make your team you know now what he can do for your team and he will increase the damage i'm sure he will depends again if you're very late game you might not need that but you can see there on this team that we could easily one key if i had a two man eater comp if i could bring out pain keeper and i had a two man eater comp and i could get that additional damage in there 
or maybe a faster one if we could do a little bit more turns. The greatest thing about Geo is that on a slow comp like this, it works well because we're getting all the damage from Geo from that reflect. Don't try to make him do a mass amount of damage. We want him to survive in everything else we do. So right there, that is Geomancer and the Clan Boss. If you want to go check out this video, it's really good. It's pretty sweet to see what kind of damage he can do here. It's amazing. And we did it first, always. Let's get back into the Spider Run. Now, this Spider Run is going to work for you whether you're doing Spiders 1 through 20. If you go up to 21 to 25, Turn Meter Reduction is not as strong. So we can't really showcase him there. You're going to have him in your Lifesteal gear. You're going to have him tanky. And then if he gets hit or even his allies get hit, he is going to do Reflect. But you want him to be the target. So you can, and I did do this earlier today, I had him at really low HP. So that every time he was hit, he had a chance to counterattack. We covered this in Zephyr Sniper a long time ago. Almost two years ago, we had Zephyr's, Zephyr Sniper, which is an uncommon, come in here with like no gear on, almost naked, just enough so that she would lose 25% of her HP when she's hit. So she'd have a high percentage chance, a 50% chance to counterattack. Her A1 counterattack is AoE. She was in lifesteal gear. She had War Master procs. She was getting that life back and staying alive so that you can complete content and get through Spider. Well, we're gonna do even better because Geomancer steals turn meter. It's all about not having this mother spider take a turn. 100%, you don't want that ugly cook spider to take a turn, eat all her spiderlings, do mass amount of damage to you and heal back. That's the biggest thing. You don't want her to heal back. So we're doing turn meter reduction on our two armagers. They're both at 200 speed. We've got our Geomancer. We've got Bellower in a stun set to break things up a little bit. You could bring in Sill. I don't know if you have Sill by then. You might not on a new account, but you can bring in anything. It's not about the team comp. This is about what Geomancer can do for you. AOE, decrease accuracy on the A1 so our resistance doesn't be that high. We'll start resisting more of these poisons. The whole team will. And then we're going to get life back. And we want him to be attacked. Even if he's not attacked, though, he's still going to help you out. If you want to put him in a stun set later on, you could do that. But if he's your target, like if he's your real attack target, this is how you want. Lifesteal gear just like this unless you have up a leech on everyone. Then you can do the lifesteal and just have leech up. You could bring in that Garush that you got pretty early. Get that leech up and then use Garush heal on that A3. Those regions that he's going to give us and help out with that as well. I can't even talk. This is so amazing. I can't talk. And I know I might sound a little crazy to you right now, but it's, you know, I kind of had to do it myself to believe it. I had to go out here and gear this guy up and put him everywhere I could thinking that, hey, if I'm brand new to this game, what could I really use this champion? Because I know what it's about late game, right? Late game, we have so many great champions. We use all those great champions. I still think he is a clan boss monster, but now I feel Early game account, mid game account, he will take you. He will take you to the next step in so many places. Right there, two minutes, 32 seconds. Oh, one other thing with this. I made it so that he did not do his A2 here, that he only did his A1 and A3. We don't want to waste time because when he gets a turn, we want to make sure he's doing that AOE and getting those heals back off a of Giant Slayer. So he's going to hit everybody then. We don't need him to do his A2 for any reason here whatsoever, so I cut that out. His A3 is going to place burns on the person with the highest turn meter. So you're going to have to pick the spider boss. You're either going to have to do it manual or you're going to have to click the spider boss so that the red icon underneath it is showing. So that we always put that turn meter reduction on the boss. Otherwise, he'll try to put the burn up and try to steal turn meter from different people and you'll die. You can't let the spider boss take a turn. I did make the armagers do their A2 so we'd get damage in there. And then Bellower was just doing Bellower's thing, right? Bellower is in a stun set doing what Bellower does. Apothecary is at 250 speed. 247, 250 speed, not crazy. None of it is too crazy, but it doesn't matter. Again, none of this matters. Whatever you're at in the game, whatever gear you have in the game, he's going to help you. I promise you he's going to help you. He's going to make it easier for you. And as you get stronger, your team's immediately going to get stronger because he's going to be able to apply those debuffs and make it work for you. He will. All right, let's go on to the next part of this. What else do we have besides? Uh, okay, we've got potion keeps now. Potion keeps aren't that big of a thing, but when you're coming up in the game, they can be. They can be a real struggle with a three turn turn meter steal, but we're going to use his A2 here. So I talked about the A2 just a minute ago, how it steals buffs from people or it removes the buffs. Well, a lot of times we don't really care about that A2 doing that. 
When the A2 does get a kill, we also lower the cooldown on his A3. We're not really worried about that either because we're fighting bosses. But here, we're taking the turn meter away. And we're doing it so much that it makes it easy for you to progress. Now we're going to go into the Magic Keep next. I had to pay 200 gems to open this up. But I wanted to open up the Magic Keep because I wanted to see him. Like, I wanted to see him steal. And I remember coming up back in the day. Some of these were difficult. It depends on your gear requirement, where you're at, what you're doing, what your team comp is. Do you even have somebody that can steal by now? You might not. You might not have anybody that can steal buffs away from people. And that's not important anywhere except for something like this. Otherwise, we really don't care that much about it. And yes, Geomancer can help you go through the Doom Tower if you have a limited roster. I was never big on him. There he goes. He stole everything, right? He just stole all that. He stole the whole shield. The boss is going to go down. We just took the turn meter. Like, we're stealing the shields from this boss, and we're taking the turn meter. What's not to love about that? And then we just beat the boss down. This will help you get higher in those keeps. At this point, does anybody think I sounded like a crazy person this whole entire time? Please let me know down below. Let me know what you think about Geomancer. Do you think he is a good sell? Do you think this is a good event? Can you at least say that Geomancer isn't for me because I'm so incredibly in game, Stu, but I see what you're talking about. I see how he could for sure elevate somebody's account mid game, early game, late game, if they don't have that many champions, and if what they just saw can help them get through there, especially with Ice Golem. If you're trying to tackle Ice Golem 25 and you want to farm there, and you don't have Bad Alcazar or Tyrant or somebody like that to make it easy for them to solo if it messes up, then you got your champion now. And that's not one, you know, that's not the only reason. You don't want to just play him for that reason alone, but you might want to break him out for your clan boss along with that. And you don't have to change gear. And then also progressing through the spider, doing the keeps, all the rest. This guy is going to help people. Going through the Doom Tower, fighting the Doom Tower bosses. Not Doom Tower hard bosses, but Doom Tower normal bosses. He's definitely going to help you. Doom Tower hard, hard bosses, especially on this rotation, are a whole different... Like We can't even use burns on a lot of these bosses and it doesn't even work well. Except for the Frost Spider. But the rest of them, it's not really feasible to bring him in there. Although, if you are on normal, you can. You can bring him in on anything except for the Magma Dragon. And you're going to do fine. He's going to help you through there. He's going to help you with the waves with that AoE decrease accuracy. And stealing the turn meter. What do we got on him? We're just going to look at him. I'm not going to show you everybody else. If you want to go check out those videos, please do. And you'll see what he's geared like for those. For the most part, why we have higher resistance is because we are doing stage 25 of Ice Golem. Otherwise, again, please keep this in mind. You don't need any fancy gear for this champion coming up in the game. Early game and mid game. Even in late game. But if you're doing stage 25 like I am late game, then you want some resistance. Now we're offsetting having to have high resistance because we're doing the decreased accuracy on his A1. So we do have a fair amount of resistance. And of course, I have a max Great Hall. I can't control that. So we do have this much resistance. I don't know if this is needed if we're lowering theirs by 50%. We are not trying to make him a DPS machine. I want survivability, HP, HP, speed boots, HP or defense, HP or defense, accuracy, resistance, accuracy, resistance, wherever you can get that from. First things first though. Speed and accuracy. That's it. Survivability, speed, and accuracy for you right now. And that lifesteal gear will get you there. And then from there, once you get high enough to where you're like, look, he was working before. He was working amazingly. I can see where he would work now, but I need to get his resistance up. I don't want him to have those debuffs up. And I feel like he can solo this if I get his resistance up. And then you'll start to work on getting his resistance up just a bit. For me, this gear isn't that amazing. This is actually a really good piece because it's giving us some speed, but then resistance and accuracy. I like that. And it's got a crit substat. Insane. Here we got three hits into speed. A little bit too much for me to show for you to be like, okay, Stu. One hit into speed here. No hit into speed here. Two hits into speed there. And then we got crit rate, which we don't need. I don't need this. What I need on this is accuracy and resistance. I could care less about crit. I do not care about that whatsoever. Again, I want him to survive. I want him to reflect back all those damn reflects to get that Giant Slayer proc up on everyone. I want that burn to land because without him actually applying this burn, we can't do this. We can't do anything of what you just saw. It will not work. And then at times when I want to use this to remove buffs, then I will use it. But otherwise, I want to lock this out. I don't even want this ability to really go off. What do you think, everyone? 
let me know down below. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you all in a video soon.